Let's talk about another move, the one in stocks pulling back again today. Our next guest sees even more downside ahead. Let's bring in BTIG Chief Market Technician Jonathan Krinsky. It's good to see you as always. I mean, we rely on you at these moments uh, to, to tell us where you think we're going. We failed to stay above the 200-day, and I suppose that was a fairly ominous sign. You know, I, I think what's remarkable about, about the market this year is just how um, much it's respected, you know, pretty basic elements of trend and, and resistance. And I think you know, if we go back to the August rally, um, it almost seemed too obvious that the S&P was going to rally up to the 200-day fail and move back down. That's exactly what it did. And then here we find ourselves again in a similar situation, um, back to resistance. The VIX got down around 20. Um, and, you know, anecdotally, I, I heard more people saying it was too obvious and therefore we couldn't just you know, it wasn't that easy to get up to a 200-day fail and move back down, um, but that's what's been working. And, you know, the downtrend is still intact. Um, mm -hmm. And the other point I'd add is I think there's kind of this um, narrative out there that, you know, the market always rallies in December and seasonality is always bullish. And you know, I think we talked with about this with you last time we were on the show. If you look at... Um, years since 1930 when the S&P is down 15 percent or more through through November 30th, like we were this year, December's actually averaged a negative 2.16 percent return. So it's a bit different uh, setup this time around than traditionally when you're in kind of a, a flat or an up market. So specific numbers matter to you and to our viewers. They like to have an idea about if you think there's going to be downside to what degree do you think it's going to be of what kind of numbers to the downside are we talking about on the S&P and what kind of time frame do you see it happening within? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, there's there's definitely some support levels we're watching, um, you know, obviously 3900 and 3925 kind of where we bounced off today. And then below that, you're kind of looking 3800, 38 and a quarter. Um, I think big picture, though, you know, we can't rule out a move to new lows. Now, it's probably not going to happen you know, in December, that would be pretty uh, dramatic. But I think, um, you know, structurally, nothing really from our work has changed. And so the downtrend is still intact. Um, we're actually seeing signs, you know, um, some some indexes like the most short index hit its second lowest close of the year today. Um, Amazon, you know, very close to new 52 close. So there's signs that things are continuing to deteriorate. Um, and then I'd, I'd say the biggest warning sign, though, that we saw the last two days is in the financials, the banks. Uh, the banks relative to the S&P 500 uh, hit their lowest relative performance since December of 2020. So um, pretty, pretty uh, rough action there in the financials. O oil negative year to date. I mean, that move has been an eye opener for certain you you continue to see downside risks in energy among some other sectors? Yeah, you know, energy, we've kind of played both sides this year. Um, it's obviously been the year-to-date leader, but there's been a couple of times, if you call back in May, June, um, it kind of just got ahead of itself. Um, and, you know, what's what's interesting is, you know, the market, the narrative is starting to shift a little bit right from the inflation um, concerns to maybe some more economic contraction concerns. I think, you know, if you look at the action yesterday, S&P was down 1.8 percent. Uh, bonds, as judged by TLT, were uh, also down. And then today you have the S&P down about the same amount, and bonds were actually up 1.4 percent. So, you know, it's the narrative seems to be shifting from lower rates equals good for stocks to lower rates maybe is a sign of, of economic um, contraction. And in that scenario, energy is going to probably um, start to underperform. And then you just have a positioning situation where it's, you know, it's up 50 percent on the year when every other sector is down on the year. Um, it wouldn't take much to just get a little mean reversion there. So, you know, structurally, energy may be still OK, but tactically, we still see some downside risk there. Yeah. You pick your day and you decide what the uh the news means for that particular moment. I think we're learning that lesson well. Jonathan, thank you. Jonathan Krinsky, BTIG.